My name is Shani George. I'm a psychotherapist and founder of Culture Minds Therapy. My role is to take therapy outside of the office and to you all at home. I bring to you the mind behind your favourite guests. We speak about mental health, therapy and self-care. Femi. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm great. Good, good, good. So I want to start off with a wellness this or that. Okay. Right? So it's like, it's similar to a would you rather. Yeah. And I want you to just think on the spot. Don't okay. think too deeply about no, it. No, it's fine. Yeah? Yeah. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Morning runs or evening walks? Morning runs. Early riser or night owl? Early riser. Affirmations or vision boards? Affirmations. Bubble bath or hot stone massage? Neither. Neither? Neither. Spa day or nature retreat? Oh, let's do massage, sorry. Massage? Yeah, yeah. Hot stone massage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Spa day or nature retreat? Spa. Reading a book or watching a movie? Reading a book. Reading a book? I'm reading a book. Over I know, watching a movie? Surprisingly, right? Oh, wow, okay. Reading a book. Meditation or mindfulness? I don't do neither, but if I were to pick, I would pick mindfulness. Okay. Energy drink or coffee? I try not to drink either. either. Okay. You can pass that one then. I can pass. I try to. I drink water a lot. Okay, that's I, good. I try Even better. To, I'm trying to cut out coffee, but more coffee than energy drink, if you wanted me to pick one. Okay. City breaks or adventures? I like cities. Plantain or plantain? Plantain. I'm Nigerian. I'm <laughs> born in Lagos. Like... Plantain, is it a mountain? Okay, thank you. Mm. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. Off camera, you said, you know, you would be sleeping. So I wanted to know, are you, do you have a morning routine that helps you get started for the day? All right, so today I woke up at, I want to say, like, I've got an infection on my finger. Look, it's a Ooh. bit yuck. It's a bit disgusting. And so I, it's, going i'm having an antibiotic for it right now mm. and so um but sometimes it well in the past few days it's been really painful so then i it's been waking me up at mm -hmm. 4 a.m in the morning oh, wow. so last night i was out till late i went to a, watch a musical and then i went to a listening party for a nigerian artist called pato rankin and then i left there and got home at about one so i woke up at about 4 30 so i'm a bit tired um i don't feel tired but i know i should I need more sleep mm -hmm. and so but then I woke up at 4 30 after I took some painkillers and the antibiotic because you have to take it on an empty stomach mm -hmm. um and then I tried to go back to sleep again didn't work then I went I did some work so I started writing a treatment no before that I prayed okay so before that I prayed there's an app that I've got called U versions a bible app so then they have a, like a daily sort of devotional type okay. vibe. So mm -hmm. there's a video and sort of like little bits to read. And then there's a like guided prayer thing. So I did that in the morning. After that, I did some work. After that, I went for a run and sort of my day started. Oh, nice. So pray, do a bit of work and then go for a run. Yeah, but sometimes I just do one of those things. Okay, so either, either So or. yeah, sometimes I'll just pray and then sometimes I'll go for a run. Sometimes I'll um, do work. So when I wake up super early, I'm an early riser anyway, but mm -hmm. when I wake up super early, sometimes, so yesterday I, I couldn't sleep. The day before yesterday, I couldn't sleep because I went to bed too early because again, my finger was painful. So I went mm -hmm. to bed at like eight, nine or something. And then I woke up at one and mm -hmm. I did work from one to like 4 a.m. or something. So like, you know, I just try to be productive in the early hours of the morning mm -hmm. when I'm up because I see that, in a way, weirdly, as like, you can call it, I call it, I was talking to someone about it yesterday and I said, that's my extra edge. So like, my peers don't have that. Before I used to be like, annoyed that I wake up so early, but mm -hmm. now I look at it as an extra edge. So and for a long time, it. I used to use it to run. So I run, I like running. So you use it to, being an early riser in the morning, you embrace it now? I've always kind of embraced it, mm -hmm. but before I used to be like, oh, 
I wish I could sleep more, but now I'm like, I try to extract as much productivity out of it as possible, whether that's like to go for a run or to do work. Okay, thank you for that. I'm a morning riser as well, actually. I prefer waking up early and doing, what do I do? I pray, I journal, then I'll start doing work. And I feel like I'm just more productive in the morning. So then when it gets to the afternoon, I can kind of chill and maybe like do a bit something more relaxing. So we're both morning risers. There you go. Something in common. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on everything you've achieved. I know you've got, you've released a new movie, mm. Trapping. Yeah. I've seen you also went to Parliament. Mm. So talk to me about that. So what is Trapping? For those who are not aware, what is the movie about? Well, Trapping is about a young kid who um, asked the older guys in his area to allow him to go cunch, which is like, you know, go out of town to sell drugs. And... Um, it looks at that journey and, you know, sort of initially him being really excited and optimistic about it to like, you know, him being almost trapped and unable to get out of the lifestyle. Okay. And what inspired you to do a movie like that? I mean, I read the script. It wasn't written by me. It was sent to me by, okay. by Penny Walcock. And um, um, I read it, who wrote it and directed it. And um, I read it and I was like, oh, this... This is crazy, like, I, I just couldn't... I remember reading it and being sat there for about 15 minutes because I was in shock, I was disgusted, I was irritated, I was annoyed. But because it made me feel something, I felt it had to be made. And why did it provoke such a strong emotion? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know, because, like, you know, I've never really... Remember, I've watched films about drugs and gangs and stuff like that before. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not... But there was just something unique about it that, that, you know, sort of affected me. And so it made me feel. And because it did that, I um, wanted it to come to life. Because I, like I thought, oh, yeah, it made me feel. And so it must... Mm. Like, the, idea, the, the concept of film is to make people feel. So, like, when someone watches this content, we want it to make people feel something. What do you want people to feel when they watch that? What, this the or, content, yeah. or, or trapping? Trapping. What do you want people to feel? I want them to feel it? how I felt. <laughs> okay. It wasn't like the nicest and, feeling, mm. but I want them to feel how I felt, which is like a bit shocked, a bit disturbed, a bit, a little bit more aware mm. and a little bit, um, a little bit more conscious that we should do something about it. Yeah, like We should do something about it rather than like it happens. I knew it happens. I've seen, I'm from an estate in Holloway Roads, like I grew up. In the end, like I've seen shutters, I've seen the like lifestyle. drug takers, drug users, mm -hmm. like I've seen it. Like. I must admit, I'm not from that background, yeah. right? I told you where I grew up. And I feel like when I did see the trailer, it was the same emotions that it provoked with you. It was like, I felt those same emotions, like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is quite, this is distressing it's to even watch. It's yeah, it's disturbing. So then you took it to Parliament. Mm. What was that like and why did you go to Parliament? Do you know what? I've been to Parliament loads of times. Like, okay. this is what people forget. Like, I've been... I'm quite active in terms of outside of film. I've been quite active. I've done, like, years of youth work. I've worked in prisons. I've done... Like, I was... Years ago, I was on a thing called the Digital Democracy Commission... I did a TED talk in Parliament years ago. Yeah, like, you know, like, it, I've yeah. done... Like, we are A-star students. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've done a lot of Parliament-type stuff before, yeah. like, you know, but it was important for me to take this film to Parliament because I wanted the conversations to be had, not just amongst us, but amongst, like, you know, sort of the powers that be and also with organisations that work within this area. Mm -hmm. OK. That's really good. I, you know, I commend you for doing that because it takes a big step to... I know you said you've been doing it before, but it takes a big step to kind of continue doing it. I want to continue to raise that yeah, awareness. Yeah, I think we have to engage with, for as long as we have a government and we live in a democratic society, we have to stop this thing where we just don't engage with the government. It's really mm. weird. Like, it's like, they're going to exist and they're going to yeah. decide how much tax you pay and they're going to make loads of decisions about your life. Mm. So you might as well engage with them to make decisions that, that benefit you and benefit people around you and that benefit that leads to the change that you want to see mm -hmm. what change would you say you want to see i mean i want to see like um it's two-pronged really like i want to see more done to support young people out, that out outside of school 
so that, you know, I feel like school is the only resource at the moment to support young people, especially teenagers. Like, they have um, a lot of time out of school. And unless you're from a wealthy background, your parents can afford to pay for you to go and do, like, after-school clubs and stuff like that. Then you basically... And your parents... If parents, if parents are working full-time, and most of the time now, both parents work full-time, and then kids go to school and come back home, and the parents working full time, and because of the cost of living crisis, um, and for working class people, there's always been a cost of living crisis. Mm. But anyway, let's cost of living crisis. It means that you know it's unlikely that both parents will be at home, mm. and so then kids are left to their own devices to either explore. engage with the digital world or explore outside and like you know get lost in different things. And so, whereas, like, before when I was growing up, there was the possibility of that, but there were also, like, cheap coaching, football coaching things, all free even. A lot of the stuff was free. And then also there was, a, because there was a lot of funding for that, and then there was, like, um, a lot of youth clubs and stuff. So on that front, yeah, I would like to see that. On the other front, I'd like to see less of a criminalisation approach taken to drug, um, drug users. Uh, I, I, th I think um, in Portugal they have a system where um, there's... Um, what's the word, decriminalisation. And decriminalisation by itself doesn't necessarily work without treatment, without, um, without support and without um, reintegration. So I feel like actually those steps can be taken for people that take drugs. Okay. So because what this film does, it's not like just looking at the drug dealers, it's looking at the lives of the drug users. And actually what I want, the conversation I want to have is like, what's the next step? And the next step is to look at, you know, possibilities around decriminalization which is one of the key reasons that we went to parliament that's good i love that i love i, I was literally immersed in what you were saying because I, I totally agree i never knew they did that in portugal so you're making me aware of that yeah. as well um, and one of the things you said about you know in today's society there's not a lot of things for kids to do for free i remember talking to my friend about that like before we used to play out we used to have friends who would knock on their doors and go out and you know just explore but now kids as you said are at home on either technology or trying to explore the outside world, which may be dangerous and harmful. Mm. So thank you for ways and awareness about that. That's mm. really, really good. I wish you all the best. Thank you. With that. So mm. I want to get to know you a bit more. Yeah. Um, you were born in Nigeria. Yes, Lagos. And age 10, you came to the UK. Yeah. I want to know a bit more about what was life like in Nigeria for you? Do you know what? Like when I think back, you know you romanticise the, pa the past, but... So I was born, I was one, my dad died, no, my, I was born, my dad died when I was one. Oh, no, and then I lived with my mum in, so we lived, I was born in Lagos. And I don't know at what point we moved from Lagos to a town called Ogbomosho, which is where my mum was born. It's not where my mum's, well, she's kind of from there because she was born sure, there, yeah, but, yeah. but it's not where they're from. But um, she was, and so we moved there. And I remember living with my mum and like, it was fine. And then I remember like one day, I always have this memory, like, but I don't know if it's a real one or a fake one. I remember being by a tree in that town and my mum, me going off with my grandma and being really upset because like I didn't live, I wasn't gonna live with my mum anymore. And so I remember I used to dream this dream or like, actually oh, think wow. about it a lot but it might be fake as well because i don't even know if this is real have you ever spoken to your mum about it no but i don't remember a tree i think i might have spoken to my mum but obviously okay. my mum is very hurtful for my mum because yeah. that time i think really what was going on was that she like my grandparents asked her to let them come and let me come and live with them because they used to come and see me like all the time like every week and they were old and so they asked her if i could live with them and i think she was like not, she was kind of not financially where she wanted to be at the time. Obviously we're not spoken about that element. And so she let me go and live with them. And then I lived with them for about maybe two or three years. And then I moved to, um, my mum got married to someone that lived here. And I was gonna process my V, they were gonna process my visa for me to move here as well. Okay. And whilst, they were doing that, I moved with her auntie in Lagos again, which is all right. Um, so I lived there till I came here. 
So wow. I lived like maybe like four or five years of my life in Lagos and then four or five years with my grandparents mm -hmm. in a town called Modakeke, which is where my whole family's from. So my mum's family's from there, my dad's family's from there, which is in a place called Oshun State in Nigeria, which is like sort of the home of Yoruba people. That's okay. like the, the origin story of it. <laughs> like literally, I'm not joking. That's the myth for that. The origin story of the Yoruba people starts in a place called Ilefe, which is right next to where I'm from, mm -hmm. basically. But yeah, Nigeria was fun, you know, like just you thinking it? about emotionally, mm. like I wasn't sad or anything. I was like just always happy. I lived with my grandparents. They gave me what I wanted. Like mm. it was just lit. Like it was just, it was the best time. Like I really enjoyed it. I remember like just running wild with my cousin. Like there was, I had a cousin called Yinka. We just used to go out all the time. There was a period I wasn't even, the teachers were on strike the government weren't paying their um, wages so i wasn't even going to school for a period like it was just like okay was just living life like it yeah. was just like we would wake up every day would eat food and then we'd just explore and like i lived with my grand so yinka's granddad was he lived with his grandparent granddad and i lived with my grandparents and like we'll just just do whatever like we'll just do like just live our lives and just explore and sort of like you have like because we lived in a sort of a compound, like, and so we'd just run around wherever. Every so often, I'd literally just decide to go and stay with my mum's sister and her family who lived, like, I want to say, like, maybe a mile, a mile and a bit away. But I'd just go by myself, like, and just go and stay with them for a while. Like, and so yeah. it was just like... Okay, it so was, like it, was, it was fun. And... Yeah, so I would just tell my grandparents, yeah, I'm mm. going to go and stay with them and just go and just turn up and I'll stay with them. And that, that was how I was raised, like, mm. with my... Like, uh, that period, maybe from when I was about five, six to, like, seven, mm. eight, I just did what I liked. And it, I like the fact that you, you know, you were able to be happy and kind of explore and you were protected and you had your family around you. Not having your dad there, did you ever feel like something was missing or because no. you were so happy you no. didn't kind of... Okay. I'm the being real, like, I, I miss my dad when I, as I've got older, like, okay. older idea of not having a father, mm. as I've got older, because I've got children, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing this with my sons, but oh, okay. I, I never got to do this with my dad, or, like, I never mm. had a dad to do this with. Or, How does that make you feel? Like... It is what it is, like, you know, so every, what all, I believe in God, right? So, like, that kind of helps because I'm like, you know, we all, like, sort of have our destiny and my dad's destiny was that, you know, he died when he was 30, but he looked, like, I look at pictures of him, he looked like he had a good time too. <laughs> That's <laughs> he nice. He looked like he had a good time too. He didn't look like he had a sad life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Have you ever opened up about that or shared that? What, before? spoken about my dad? Yeah. Yeah, I've spoken about fatherhood and my dad before, mm. but I suppose, like, not, not in that much detail, but in a way, like, I've always, I've always, like, been quite... I've never been... I think people miss fathers, like, when they're like, oh, I wish... Remember, I was young, mm. so I kind of grew up without no really awareness of yeah. a father. And then also, at the same time, I had, like, my granddad. Okay. And then when I moved to Lagos, there was, like, and I had my uncle that I called dad for ages. They would just say that was my dad. So for ages, I used to think my dad's oldest brother, brother. was my dad. Oh, wow. And then one day I was like, right, he just got married to another woman. That's <laughs> not my mum. Like, what is this? Like, what's going on? This is, can't be my... I just what figured you, it out. What did you think? No one ever happen? spoke to me about my dad dying. Okay. This is what's weird about Nigerian do you feel like culture. You, do you feel like that's a, there's a gap there where you would like to know? No, not really, okay. because like... No one in my family directly spoke to me about my dad dying, but I would bump into people in my town, because like I said, I was just running around all the time. And that would tell me stories about my dad, and oh, your dad was such a nice man, he said he was going to do this for me. And like, like my, your dad was like going to take me to Lagos, or he was going to give me money, or he, was gonna, or he paid for my child to go to school. Or da, da, da. Like, he was like, you know, like people loved him. And even like when I talked to his cousins or whatever, later on or even during like people just love this man like he was mm. like oh, that's like nice. i remember and his younger sister he would like tell stories about when he came home and it would just be like a party when he came home from lagos just be like they like 
the stories they told about my dad, they made him seem like this lit guy. Like, you know, like that's good though. Yeah, that, you hold those memories. With yeah, you for to sure, know that your for sure. Was... And in a way that when I was young, by the time I realised that my dad was died young, mm. and I didn't have that man wasn't my dad. Like the stories that I was told about my dad was like quite nice. It was yeah. like it was like people liked him, mm. and and that was very important. To, yeah. to me shaping that, your perception yeah because well. people really really like like some people had no reason like random strangers would come up to me it wasn't like <laughs> people making it up like mm. people really like this man and people really um really enjoyed the time that they had with him so you know that's it is good what it is. that's good so you've got nice memories of him yeah. so age 10 you in the you come to the uk yeah you mentioned that you were an a-star student you, you went to uni mm -hmm. Did you always know, did you always knew, did you always know, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again, age 10, Yes. you came to the UK, Yes. A-star student, Yes. studied law, Yes. is that right? Did you always know you wanted to be in the film industry? No, because like what people always forget is that when I was, we're talking like the 90s, mm. how many film stars did you ever meet in the 90s? Like, I don't Mainly know. Maybe, Americans, actually. Maybe you did. Maybe no. you met Will Smith in the 90s. Like, I don't know. I didn't meet no one. No I one, didn't know no, no one. one. TV yeah. land was TV land. I wasn't... There was no Twitter. Basically, TV land and movies was so remote to our day-to-day -day existence mm. in that it was just in the newspapers, at the movies, on TV and on VHS. Yeah. I'd, I'd never seen a film yeah. person. Before. It was like a world that was. It was like another world. A fairy tale. Yeah, yeah. It didn't that. exist. Yeah. It didn't exist. It was like another planet. Mm. It was like stars lived in another planet. Yeah. Whereas now, <laughs> stars yeah. live in proximity to us. Yeah, I like because that. Because they tell us where they're going to eat dinner. They do videos about in their house. Mm. Some of them do videos of their wife having a baby. Like, do you. <laughs> Yeah. I, I feel like I'm their brethren. So mm. by the time I've met them, I'm like, yo, yes, eat. DJ Khaled, you're right. <laughs> where's Assad? Like, where's Michael Jackson's children? We didn't even know their names, yeah. really, for time. Like, do you know what I mean? And mm. they had blankets covering their face. <laughs> Imagine we went from Michael Jackson covering his children's faces with blankets mm. to being able to see DJ Khaled's wife have a baby. Mm. You've come far. That's close proximity. How did you when, you, when you came to the UK, mm. what was that like to kind of navigate your life? What did you do first? What do you mean? So you came should to I the UK. Should I tell you about my first day? I still remember it. First day coming to the UK? Yeah, yeah should yeah, I tell, tell you. me about it. So it was the first time I got on a plane um, with my auntie that I lived in with in Lagos. So I, she put, brought me on a plane. I was scared. Because so I, I remember like in Nigeria, there's just plane crashes and there's rumours. And so I just went. This is the thing, you're a therapist, so you're going to love this, yeah? Okay. <laughs> when things get stressful, or I get really upset, or I can't cope with stuff, I sleep. Okay, why or do I you sleep? I force myself to why? sleep. Why? Because it's actually a coping mechanism, I think. i figured over the years. I think because I know that when I wake up, I'm not going to feel how I feel, and my subconscious will work it out. Or even sometimes I have questions that I go to bed with and I know I'm going to have answers when yeah. I wake up. Okay. I agree with that part, but on the part of going to sleep when you're stressed, are you trying to suppress your emotions? And I don't know. I them? don't know what it is. It but sounds like that. But maybe it is, but then when I wake up, I just feel, I feel fine. Like, you know, but anyway, so I remember catching a plane as a 10 year old and being, oh my gosh, this is mad. I'm on a plane. <laughs> I might die. And then I just slept, landed, got to the UK, Gatwick Airport. Um, I think someone picked us up, the, 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 the woman's son, drove us to the house. Um, he lived in now what I now know is like an estate in, but I didn't know what it was. Remember, we don't have estates like tower blocks and stuff in mm -hmm. Nigeria. We do, but I didn't really, it's not very, I lived it's in not houses. Like yeah, mm -hmm. it's not like here. Um, so then moved, arrived, he dropped us off. And I remember, like, vividly sitting in his sitting room, yeah? This was in the summer. I came on June the 10th, right, 97. And I remember sitting there, 
and watching TV, waiting for my mum to come and collect me because she was at work and she was going to come and collect me and then take me home. So did your mum arrive here before you my came My mum lived oh, here she, okay. like a year and a half before, like a year okay. and a bit before. No, mm -hmm. more than that. Like She moved there in 93, October okay. 93, and I moved there in June 97. So okay. she lived there way before more, me. Yeah. Um, so um, I remember watching TV yeah, and trying to figure out cricket and tennis because I've never seen them before. Mm -hmm. So like I've never seen cricket before in my life, mm -hmm. never heard of it. And I'm watching, because remember in the summers, it used to be the like Ashes and Wimbledon every year. Mm -hmm. And that was just on TV, on BBC One or BBC Two, on rotation. So I'm just sat there, like just watching this TV channel and like trying to, f for the first time, seeing tennis being played and figuring out the, the points system because you know it's not like one, two, three. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, yeah. It's like 15, it's 30, confusing. 40. Yeah. Deuce. Yeah. Advantage. Love. <laughs> like, you know? Like. Yeah. And so, yeah, so figuring that point system and then figuring out, again, cricket. Like, mm. Because, again, it's like you get a four or you get a six if you hit it out. Like, you know, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And then I left there. And then I remember going to... This is funny as well. I've said this before. This is funny. I remember going... My mum took me to her flat they lived in a flat and my cousin lived there with them so it was my mum my sister who I'd never met before as well by the way so like that was interesting mm -hmm. like meeting new family like essentially my little sister my actual little sister like who's we're really close still mm. to, to wow. this day but I'd never seen her before I'd only seen her in pictures mm. so they're meeting my little sister um she was two when I met her and then um my cousin was 18 at the time he, I'd met him from Nigeria. He was born in England. His parents moved back to Nigeria. And then when he was moving back to England, he came and stayed in Lagos with us. So I knew him from that as well. So like, and I'd seen him, you know, when I told you I'd go to my mom's sister's mm. house all the time, it wasn't that sister that was his mom, but everyone, this was the oldest sister. So she was kind of like the matriarch of her sisters. Mm -hmm. So all the cousins will always be around, you know, like how yeah, it is family. Is family. I want to ask you, how has your family life shaped you mentally? That's interesting. I don't, I, I don't know. I couldn't answer directly, but I suppose they have. Like, you know, my family, family is important to me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and um, my mum, my sister, like, you know, my kids, their mum, like, you know, they've massively shaped me. Mm. Have you ever struggled with your mental health before? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I've been sad, like massively yeah. sad in life, like, but not in a way that. Do you know what? Maybe I have. Like, so I remember yeah. like a time when I, I remember doing kidhood, then I did adulthood, then I finished uni, and I thought I was gonna be like the biggest star in the world, and mm -hmm. then that didn't happen. And I remember like finding it. I found it really difficult going from being in uni and being in these successful films to not being busy all the time, because I like being mm. busy, I like to do stuff. And so when you're not busy, do you feel like that makes you feel low and you question yourself? No, because at the time, at the moment, I'm not as busy as I was last week. This week, I'm not as busy as I was last week, right? So let's, let's use this week and last mm -hmm. week as an example. But I don't feel low this week. I'm, just, I'm actually quite excited. I've got a new project out. I'm finishing off another project that's going out next month. Like I'm quite, I'm quite upbeat. But at the time, I suppose the problem that existed at that time was I didn't know what I was doing next. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't have a plan. And so until I managed to make up my own plan, mm -hmm. I couldn't. I was a bit restless. And like looking back, a few years later, I was like, oh yeah, maybe I was depressed then. Oh wow. Okay. And how do you take care of your mental health now? I don't really pay, like... I wouldn't say I pay mad attention to my mental health, because... I don't really... I'm quite an upbeat, optimistic person. Okay. So I, if you say to me, how do I take care of my mental health? I don't even super think I am doing this to take care of my mental health. Okay, so you're just being you yeah, and you know what's, yeah. what, you, what to do to help you maintain yeah. wellness. Yeah, do you get okay. what I'm saying? So, like, maybe, like, me going for runs in the morning to yeah. take care of my mental health, but I don't know. I don't okay. do it for that. Mm. I do it because 
I like. You like it. I like it, but at the same time, I like. I want to be fit. I want to be like. I don't want to be. Do you know what the worst death like that? I don't want to die. I don't want to die because I was unhealthy. Okay. I don't mind dying because my dad died when I was young, right? Mm. And I know because of that, I've always had a heightened awareness of that of mm. death and that everyone's gonna die. But like, imagine just dying because like I just didn't exercise enough or I, I okay. had really bad food or just feels a bit like self-inflicted uh, and that's one of my fears is like actually why do you like why would you do stuff to undermine your well-being or like your aliveness <laughs> mm. I like that that's, that's, that's a good way to think of things um, so I guess on the flip side you're as you said you're always maintaining your wellness and doing things that you know is going to keep you healthy keep you you know, up to date with things and mm. feeling good within yourself. So thank you for sharing that. Mm. Thank you for coming. Mm. On a scale of zero to 10, how are you feeling having finished today's interview? 10 being the happiest. At six, seven. Six, seven, okay. Any questions for me? Any questions for you? Yes. How do you feel that you've got what you wanted out of this interview? Yes, I do. What did you want? What did I want? Uh, to get to know more about you, get to know more about, you know, the mind behind your career and mm. your journey to where you are now. Mm. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've got to know that. And if I want to know more, we can do a part two. Yeah? I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm down. Whatever you need. Perfect. Thank you.